Hey guys, and welcome to the second episode of this tutorial series, where I teach you how to make your own bullet hell in Game Maker Studio 2. Today's episode will be centred on making the player dash. A dash is vital in almost all bullet hell games as it allows the player to become invulnerable for a short amount of time. This means that you can dodge through things that you may have not been able to dodge before, such as a big giant laser or a wall of bullets. Games such as Enter the Gundam and Project Arrhythmia both have this mechanic, as letting the player become invincible can allow games to become much harder with crazier attack patterns. We can do this in Game Maker by using an event. Since the dash will take an amount of time, we will have to use some sort of timer system. Thankfully in Game Maker we can use alarms instead of using more variables. Alarms are pretty much what the name suggests, the event will run when a timer you can set goes down to zero. As you can see in this demo here that I've quickly made, when you press the spacebar an alarm will start index zero and the index basically allows for more alarms to be in like one object, see so zero to eleven and so this alarm set to 60 game frames so that would be a pro that would be one second and if we look in the alarm event it will simply rotate the image by 45 degrees so if we go ahead and run this, here's a green square, and I press space key, and you wait, and see look, it's rotated 45 degrees, and I can do it again, and there it is. Uh, so that's how alarms work, and we can use this to implement dashing in Game Maker. As you've probably noticed by now, this isn't a normal walkthrough, instead I've actually already made the player dash, um, so instead for this video, um, I'll tell you how I've done this, so you can hopefully understand it better, and I don't just feed you the code. So as you can see here, the game hasn't really changed from the last video, the player can still move around and interact and collide with these blocks here, but if you press space this time, the player can dash in the direction that it's currently moving. And if you press space while it's not doing anything, it just won't dash. So now I can go into Game Maker and show you how I've done this. Let's start with the create event. So as you can see here, in the control section, we've got a new variable control dodge set to VK space. And like these ord functions, it's Game Maker's way of saying, oh look, it's a space bar. And so when we check for it, we can just use this variable. And also in the create event, there's a new section, the dash section, which is a bunch of variables for, well, quite obviously, the dash. And so such as the duration, the speed, like whether it's actually dashing at all. Moving on to the step event, we can see that we've got a new variable here where it gets a keyboard input, so key dodge, sets a keyboard check pressed control dodge which is different from these keyboard checks here with the up down and stuff uh, so what this press does it means that it will only return true if it's like the first frame when the spacebar is pressed so as you can see if I press the spacebar on like the press it will return a 1 and so even if I hold it down it will be false because it hasn't been pressed next we've got a section here the start dash and the dash, uh, so what the start dash is for is that it checks if the space key has been pressed and it's not currently dashing and these two symbols can be used to form an AND statement here so if these two statements are true first an alarm will be set for the dash duration dashing will be set to true and it will save the current horizontal and vertical movement speed but amplified in these two variables here and so let's start with this line here alarm zero set to dash duration if I go into the alarm event you can see that it's just simply dashing equals false and then dashing set to true so that if you want to dash while you're dashing again you can't obviously because dashing will be true and so in this if statement you can't do it again then with these two hmov and vmov it sets it to sine hmov which is like if you 
across the entire variable down to like a minus one, a zero, or a one, depending if it's like positive or negative or just zero. So you do that to the movement variables, and then we multiply it by dash speed, which would mean so it's kind of like this here, the multiplying by move speed. But instead, it's dash speed, and I personally prefer to do it like this instead of simply changing the movement speed well, because it allows for more variability if you just wanted to change the walk speed for instance and not affect the dash you can do it like this moving on to this section the dash it's quite simple just if it's currently dashing it says sets the movement variables to these so it can move faster so if we run this program for one last time we can hopefully you can understand how the player can now dash but the whole invulnerability in the iframes can be done in the episode where we implement the health system and enemies but for now i'll see you in the next episode